In this episode, we'll introduce the concept of amplitude and how you can use it to calculate gyro error in some basic examples. Gyro compass error by amplitude is a calculation you can complete near the time of sunrise or sunset. Imagine you are sitting at your favorite beach looking to the west. That would make this the northwest and this the southwest. On the equinox in March and September, the sun is going to set at exactly true west everywhere on the planet. However, at other times of the season, this isn't so. For example, on the summer solstice in June in the northern hemisphere, the sun sets to the northwest. Likewise, on the winter solstice in December in the northern hemisphere, the sun sets to the southwest. This difference in angle between the seasons depends on your position on Earth and it can be measured. It's called amplitude. Using Bowditch and the Nautical Almanac, you can calculate the amplitude for your position. In other words, you can calculate the exact bearing to sunset or sunrise. Then all you have to do is measure it with a gyro compass and you can determine gyro error. So as a quick example, if you calculated the bearing to sunset at 275 degrees true, and then you measured the bearing of the sun at sunset and came up with 276 degrees per gyro compass, then the gyro error would be one degree. But to be correct, you also need to note the direction of error. It's either to the east or to the west. In this case, the gyro compass is reading more than the calculated bearing, so the error is to the west. You can remember this by saying gyro best, error west gyro least, error east. But how do you calculate the bearing to sunrise or sunset? Table 22 in the back of Bowditch is the key. Let's take a look at the table. Table 22 simply lists amplitudes. This is the amount of degrees away from true west for sunset, or true east for sunrise, that the sun should be at. So right away, we know that we need to learn two things. First, how can you tell the actual bearing to sunset or sunrise if all table 22 gives you is a number? Second, we need to know how to look up the correct number. Let's start with the first problem, and we have to go back to the beach again. In order to get the correct answer, we need to think about what season we are in. Remember that the sun will rise at true east and set at true west at the equinox. In the northern hemisphere, in summer and fall, both of these values are pushed to the north. So the sun will rise to the north of east and set to the north of west. Likewise, in winter and spring in the northern hemisphere, the sun seems to be pushed to the south so the sun rises to the south of east and sets to the south of west. Once we get the amplitude from Bowditch, we then need to apply this number to either 090 for east or 270 for west. This will make more sense when we do an actual example, but we need to lay the foundation now. Next for our second problem from Bowditch, it says we need latitude and declination in order to get an answer. Latitude is easy, that's just the ship's latitude, but what about declination? Well, you can imagine that somewhere on Earth, the sun is directly overhead. That spot will be really warm and the sun would be straight up in the sky. This spot changes over the course of the day, but it can be measured. The latitude of that spot is called declination. So declination is just the latitude of the sun, and we can find it in the nautical almanac. It's right here in the dec column. So let's do an example to make this sink in. It's example 6-1 from the Cutterman's Guide to Basic Celestial Navigation. On the 20th of May, you're departing Hampton Roads on patrol. You observe the rising sun at 1000 universal coordinated time, bearing 068 degrees per gyro compass. Your latitude is 36 degrees north. What is the gyro error by amplitude of the sun? Well, we know we have to get our latitude and the sun's declination in order to use table 22 in Bowditch. So let's get those first. Latitude is easy, we're at 36 degrees north. How about declination? Well, if we open to the correct day in the nautical almanac and look at a time of 1000 UTC in the declination column, we see that the amplitude is north 20 degrees. So now we have enough information to go into Bowditch table 22. If we look at the table where a latitude of 36 degrees and a declination of 20 degrees meet, that gives us an amplitude answer of 25 degrees. But what does that tell us? It tells us that the sun is going to rise and set exactly 25 degrees away from the true east and true west bearings. Since it's May in the northern hemisphere, we know that the bearings to sunrise and sunset move towards the north in spring and summer. So our bearings should be 25 degrees to the north of east. We can just write down 090 and decide whether we need to add or subtract 25 degrees. Since it's to the north of east, we need to subtract 25, and we get a final answer of 065 degrees true. That is the calculated bearing to sunrise. Just as a sidebar, think about sunset for a minute. Would we need to add or subtract 25 degrees if this was a sunset problem? We would need to add it because again, the sun is 25 degrees to the north of our base bearing. So the mathematical sign of the problem can be easily confused. 
but if you think about the season and visualize the compass, you'll be fine. So back to our problem. We calculated the bearing to sunrise at 065 degrees true, but remember we measured it at 068 degrees true. What is the gyro error? Well, it's pretty clearly 3 degrees, but is it 3 degrees east or 3 degrees west? It's west, remember. Gyro best, error west. So that's the basic process for amplitude calculations, and it applies to the sun, the moon, the planets, and the stars equally well, so it's a pretty powerful tool. This is not a task you can complete in Stella, but you can always calculate gyro error in Stella at any time. We'll talk about that in a later video. In order to do the calculation exactly correct, we need to take the measurement when the sun is two-thirds of its own diameter above the visual horizon, like this. Why? Well, because of the bending of the light in the Earth's atmosphere, when the sun is in this position, it is in reality on the celestial horizon, and that's when we want to take the measurement. So when the sun looks like this, it is two-thirds of its own diameter above the visual horizon, and that's the time to take the measurement. In the next episode, we'll dig a little deeper into amplitude problems.